Acting Cake First Alert. Welcome to This Week in Kansas with your host, Tim Brown. Hello and welcome to This Week in Kansas. Thank you for being with us this morning. It was an historic session of the Kansas legislature. The session ran for 113 days, 23 longer than planned, and at the end there was a mixture of relief and disappointment for many lawmakers and their constituents. What worked the session and what did not? On today's program, we'll talk with Senate President Susan Wagle and get her views on those 113 days. We'll also welcome a friend of the program, Chapman Rackway from Fort Hayes State University. Let's get right into it. Lots to talk about, 113 days. First of all, thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Tim, for the invitation. That, that's, that's a long session. Even uh, <laughs> that's, I, I, It was grueling, particularly at the end. I, I was going to use that word. It was grueling, difficult, and uh, I, although I haven't visited the afterlife yet, I considered it purgatory. We just <laughs> couldn't come to consensus. We were stuck. What was, when, when, you, when you look at the session and you look at some of the, the challenges that happened, I think a lot of people wondered, why didn't we, it seemed like we didn't start on a, on, a, on a tax plan or budget plan early enough. Would that be accurate to say? Well, it, the consensus revenues came in in November right after uh, the governor's election and the House's election, and they dropped some. We knew we were coming into a difficult session, and then they dropped again right in January. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, the governor gave us a plan when session first started, thinking that cigarettes and alcohol, taxing those two items was, would get us out of the hole, but actually it didn't turn out to be near enough money. Yeah. And so we did start discussing the tax plan late once we knew how big uh, the chasm was. And, and when we started discussing the options to, to raise funding, I think that was kind of a difficult thing for a lot of the Republican legislators because they didn't want to raise taxes. And so that was, that was hard. Absolutely. I mean, in both the House and, House and the Senate, we have a majority of conservative Republicans, and many of them had taken the tax pledge, and they just really resisted trying to find a way to balance that budget. Uh, we did work very hard on uh, passing additional tax cuts, but, uh, and it took a while to even get that done. Even at the end of session, we cut more taxes, and now we've asked the governor, no, uh, sorry, we cut more spending. Spending, yeah. And then we've asked the governor in it to make additions to those cuts, and so it took us a while to come up with that final number that we were going to need to balance the budget. And then there were many options and many ways that the problems could have been solved. You know, when, when we, we looked at the, the session, we had a lot of um, relatively new lawmakers, mm -hmm. which I think is challenging because it, it takes some time to really learn how things operate in Topeka. And governing is hard, and we've talked about this on the program many times. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do, and I think a lot of people don't realize how difficult it actually is and how much work there is behind the scenes. And, you know, we, one of their guests on the show has, has made the comment before that governing is kind of like playing football and running two or three yards at a time, and then two or three yards more. It's not the big long passes, Hail, Mar Hail Mary's down the field. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's lost on a lot of people. And, and I don't know if you saw that this session. It seemed like there was some of that going on that maybe some of the younger lawmakers or the newer lawmakers were really struggling. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, uh, in 2012, we were working on redistricting and we couldn't come to consensus on a House and Senate map and it went to the courts. And after the courts redrew that map, uh, the House, in there, many times, two and three legislators were drawn into one House seat. Mm -hmm. So we still have a very freshman House. In the Senate, uh, we have taken some members of the House over into the Senate. So there's some experience in the Senate, but the House is very new, and it's just unprecedented the fact that we have that many freshmen at one time. And so it does take time to learn the process, learn about the budget, learn about tax policy, and um, you know, we're a citizen legislature. That's the other thing. We spend 90 days in Topeka and then we go back to our vocation and to our jobs. And so it is a part-time job and it just takes an extra, extra effort to learn how to resolve differences and learn how to come up with consensus. In fact, it was kind of funny because you mentioned to me on the phone the other day that you know, you, you, you spent those extra days up at Topeka and it's really difficult to, to come back to your job and get through all those emails and and you just have that much more work waiting for you. And it's also, I would imagine, it's very difficult from a business standpoint All right. to do that. We had people that were really conflicted. They had planned on being at home, and mm -hmm. their 
their uh, jobs, their families were waiting for them. In the Kansas Senate, we went three weeks almost. We went through two weekends working because I felt like we were over the 90 days and we needed to stay in Topeka and finish the job. And I was hopeful that working through the weekends would help us bring consensus. So, the House uh, took some time off. Yeah, they absolutely <laughs> did. But, you know, um, we just kept grinding through it until we could find enough votes in the Senate to pass a tax bill. Let's get uh, Chapman Rackaway from Fort Hay State University to, to jump into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Chapman, how are you? Uh, doing well, Tim. Thanks for uh, having me on. Uh, nice to uh, be on with uh, President Wagle. Uh, Chapman, if you have any thoughts on, first of all, let's get your thoughts on the session. Then if you have any questions or comments for uh, uh, the Senate President, that would be great. Well, in, in my uh, Insight Kansas column uh, for uh, for this week, that'll be in the uh, in uh, partner papers throughout the state. I um, uh, drew a comparison between the um, uh, between the the session and the movie San Andreas because it, there was a disaster feel to it. Um, only we didn't have Dwayne the Rock Johnson to come in and, and save the day. To a certain extent, um, it, it was the the state senate that did um, uh, step in there and. Um, so the session finally got done, but it seemed to be a bit of a comedy of errors, as President Wagle points out. The legislature was very, very green, but you know, one of the things that you do when you run for office is you agree to learn on the job. These folks wanted this job. They knew that this was a possibility. They needed to be better prepared, and they come out looking like it's a real mess. Um, but the, the question then that I want to ask uh, uh, President Wagel is that the Senate was widely seen as being the body that kind of had its act together. They had a few plans, there were some contingencies, they, they planned ahead. The House always seemed to be playing off the back foot. And usually that is because there is top-down uh, leadership problem. Um, did you feel as though Speaker Merrick was uh, maybe lacking in his leadership in the House, as it certainly appeared to all of us who were observing from a distance? No, Chapman, I don't think he was. Uh, he had a situation with all the freshmen in the Kansas House uh, where they all said, we want one tax vote, and we want to make sure when we pass that one tax vote that it is the last train leaving and it's the one that sticks. They did not want to debate for hours on the floor and have hundreds of up and down votes on different tax policies. They told the speaker they wanted the bill done uh, in a conference committee. Uh, on the other hand, in the Senate, we enjoy debate, we're very open about debate, and uh, we're very accustomed to it. And so we spent days into the wee hours of the morning grinding on tax policy before we could come to consensus. So the speaker was responding to uh, his his colleagues when they said they wanted a plan brought before them that they could either vote up or down. And that sounds like a dangerous way to do business, though, to, to uh, not have the debate on, on the floor and have the people be able to w witness as... Uh, with the Senate. Right. I think that debate helps uh, uh, bring about consensus because then you can find out, you know, this this uh, idea here has no support and here's an idea that, you know, start, is starting to gain momentum and if we tweak it, maybe we can get it passed. But, yeah, I think debate is healthy, but as we stated earlier, we have a very freshman house yeah. and uh, and they were, conservative Republicans are fearful of having to cast a vote that could be seen as increasing taxes. While, in fact, what we're still doing is fixing the 2012 tax plan. Let's take a commercial break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about that and, and, and the, the, the difficulty that the conservatives, particularly these freshman conservatives, faced with the no tax pledge. We'll be back. Your dreams evolve, and with committed support, they thrive. American Family Insurance. 
Are you thinking about purchasing an RV or upgrading? Wichita RV can make your experience both affordable and memorable. Serving Kansans for over 25 years, our courteous, experienced, and factory trained sales staff will help you find your home away from home. Come see Bob and his team at either of our two convenient locations. East, just three miles east of Andover Road on the north side of Highway 54, or west at Mason Kellogg on the north side of the street. For more information, visit our website at wichitarv.com. And welcome back. We have Senate President Susan Wiggle as our guest this morning, along with Chapman Rackway from Fort Hayes State University. And we're going to continue our, our talk about the uh, about the session. And Chapman, you made an interesting point there with uh, uh, the leadership style in the House versus the Senate. And I, I think the senators being very, very polite and, and yeah. probably won't say anything bad about uh, 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 Mr. Merrick. But uh, I've got to agree with you, Chapman, particularly with that freshman group we had there, that's when strong leadership is really critical. And, and, and you write about that extensively in your column, uh, that, that maybe there was just a real, not maybe, but there was a real lack uh, of, of the leadership that needed to happen in the House. That, that's exactly right. And that is the, the point that I made in the column is that, you know, a lot of people have pointed to Governor Brown back and he certainly has his uh, era of culpability in this. But I really think that we need to look more at the House of Representatives because one of the things that a speaker needs to do, especially when he has a green legislature, is he's got to mentor those folks. And he has to tell them, you might think you might want only one vote. You might want the last train leaving the station, but you really really need to workshop this thing, like a stand-up comedian trying out different jokes. <laughs> You've got to see what works and what doesn't, um, because that's the only way you're going to learn the process, and it's, it, it, as it turns out, in, in a shocking bit of self-fulfilling prophecy, that series of votes that they were trying to avoid was what they ended up having in the final analysis in overtime when there was an even greater amount of attention being paid to them. So they got exactly what they didn't want multiple times over because of their own naivete. That tells me that they're not getting good leadership from the experienced members of the, the chamber and that goes straight to the speaker as well. Well, the senator's nicer than you or I, so I'm not going to put her on the <laughs> yes. spot on that one again. But I do have a question for you, Senator, about <laughs> Uh, I ideology, and, and last week I was told not to say that on the show anymore, but I'm going to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think it's, it's when you run for office, as you've done many times, and, and, and you, you know how this works, you, you run on your, your set of principles or your ideology, and, and I, some of the folks complain that maybe blind ideology was a challenge this session. You know, you say you're not going to do something, and by golly, you're going to stick, stick by your guns even if it leads to disaster. And that's almost what we saw, I think, with, with the session, because some of these lawmakers just would not budge. And, 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 and as you know, you kind of learn the art of compromise as you've worked through the process for a few years. Right, and Republicans are very independent-minded people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very hard to, to uh, help bring to consensus. That's just our nature, that, you know, the Democrats really do pull together. They're a minority party in Kansas. They pull together, they work together, they all step in line. And we have so many Republicans in the House and the Senate. Um, I think everybody was just hoping that somebody else would cast that vote <laughs> and that I wouldn't have to. And it became clear that in the last couple days when Speaker Merrick and, the, Merrick and the Governor and I all sat down with both caucuses and said, look, uh, we're in a crisis right now. And this is not Washington, D.C. We can't pass an unfunded budget. We've got to, to fund the budget. And we can't walk out the door until we do. And if we do, there's going to be unintended consequences. The governor said he could either line item veto the regents in the mm -hmm. budget bill, or he could let that bill become law and then go to allotments, or he could call us back for a special session. And not one person liked any of those options. So I think it became real, real at that moment that, you know what, I was hoping my neighbor would pass that bill but now I might have to be that one vote. I imagine as, as you got into those, those final days and just you know from some of, the, some of the things I saw, the quotes I read, the, the emotions were just, I mean, they were out of control. I, and people were, were really struggling. And, and I can't imagine what it would be like to be in those committee meetings and, and the various meetings as, as leadership where you're trying to, trying to herd the cats, push people, and get them going in one direction. And that, uh, what was that like? It becomes very emotional for many people. I mean, um, 
and, and you find yourself in a very small world inside the Capitol, and you're watching, what you do is you watch the news and you read your e emails, and you're better off if you go home and go to the grocery store and go to church and take your kids to school <laughs> and talk to the real people outside. So it becomes very overwhelming because you're only in an environment where that's all you're talking about. And it's, uh, it, it just becomes very difficult to cast those votes. Chapman, you have any uh, next thoughts or questions for the uh, Senator? Well, I, I think what she's saying about uh, being a, as connected to constituents a, as possible is important, but I also temper that against statements made by uh, a number of folks. Um, they're kind of encapsulated in Mark Hutton's uh, op-ed piece uh, in, in the uh, Eagle on Thursday, where he said that what people were really afraid of was the postcardization of, uh, of these votes, that those constituents that they seemingly had become disconnected from would then see these postcards at re-election time and, and act accordingly, and that, that drove a lot of fear um, among legislatures or legislators and contributed to this kind of seeming chaos in the last couple of weeks of, of the session. It, were, were people openly talking about what the electoral consequences might be uh, of these votes in terms of their voters, not in terms of the groups, because we know that your know, groups who make people sign tax pledges to get their support are going to hate uh, certain parts of this. But the folks back home, what are they saying? Well, people were very worried about the consequences. Um, <clears throat> however, I was postcarded during session, and, and when I came home on weekends and when I talked to my husband and, and people who we work with at our business, I, I think that the public wanted us to address first the fact that the 2012 tax plan had a loophole in it that was an unintended consequence where business owners uh, w w had ended up without paying any personal income tax on money that they withdrew from the business and spent personally on their mortgage or on their car or on their daycare. Um, that was an unintended consequence. I think that most people wanted us to fix that, but it became very difficult to do that when the governor said he'd veto it. Uh, the other problem is, is that we, uh, those of us who wanted to look at resolving the crisis in that way, we uh, talked to many CPAs, we talked to our revisors, and we found out that tax law is extremely complicated, and it's absolutely tied to the federal tax code, which is even more complicated. And when you tried to fix one part of the business exemption, then it might leak through in, in another way. I mean, people, uh, tax policy drives behavior, and uh, people pay a lot of money to CPAs and accountants to uh, lower uh, the taxes that are due. So um, we would have liked, some of us would have liked to fix that loophole. It became uh, impossible. We didn't have the votes to get it done. So we had to go to a broad sales tax, um, a consumption tax. And I do believe it is good public policy to not lean on income tax as much as Kansas has in the past and uh, to move towards more of a consumption tax. That is good policy. Um, I just believe that we're desperate for growth in Kansas and we're desperate for these businesses to take off and, and to hire more people and invest in machinery equipment. I believe that'll happen as soon as we have some economic certainty. Um, but until then, we've got to make the budget balance. Let's, uh, we're going to take another commercial break. When we come back, I want to talk about the consumption tax uh, th thoughts and theories. And I also want to talk, Chapman, about your survey because what happened in the legislature actually kind of, I think, goes along with some of what the public was asking for in the survey that you shared on the show a few weeks ago. And we'll get into that here in a minute. Is it getting hot in here or what? Channing Tatum and the guys of Magic Mike XXL dance in at TakeOver. And Colin Farrell hits GMA too. It's so excited. So magic. Plus, it's been one controversial ride, and now The Bachelorette speaks out. This week on Good Morning America. Saturdays on MeTV. Marshall Dillon keeps the peace in Dodge City. Kind of. It's Gunsmoke, part of BTV's Most Wanted Westerns. Brought to you by Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Dodge City. Embarrassing. Sad. Shameful. There's never an acceptable reason for driving dirty. Not with the Zips Unlimited Wash Club. For as little as $14.95 a month, members enjoy unlimited washes at any of our five Zips Car Wash locations. That's less than 50 cents a day. So show some pride. Zips your ride. Join the Zips Unlimited Wash Club today. Zips 3-Minute Car Wash. 
Zip in, zip out, zip on. And welcome back. We, we were talking about the consumption tax right before we went to break, and I, I've been on record. I'm not a huge fan of consumption taxes. I do think they are regressive taxes. But that being said, Chapman, I want you to jump in and, and talk to us about the survey you, sh you shared on the show a few weeks ago, because in that survey, if I, if I remember correctly, the public actually favors consumption taxes over the income taxes. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the, the public is kind of lined up with, with President Wagle on this. Um, if, if there's a pecking order of least favorite to, to uh, most favorite taxes, it goes um, property, income, and those are pretty close to each other, and then sales quite a bit because obviously there's an opt-out element to the, to the sales tax, especially if you happen to live close to a border. Um, and that also makes things a, a little more difficult for, uh, for budgeting because you have this greater variability possibility of, um, uh, of your uh, revenues coming in. So that, that's another factor in there. There's the regressivity that you're talking about here, Tim, but there's, there's also that variability in budgeting. Um, what's, what's really interesting, though, and kind of where I thought you were going uh, when you were talking about our Docking Institute survey in Kansas Speaks uh, that, that was released a little while ago, was the fact that while sale, while all kinds of income tax uh, reductions are very popular, what are equally unpopular are cuts to schools and so on, exactly the things that we were looking at having the possibility of facing had the legislature not eventually gotten down to, to the business of putting in this new revenue package and making, uh, making that work. Um, so we, we talk a lot about these sales taxes or about, about taxes and how unpopular they are, but then when it comes down to the consequences of tax reductions, we're equally angry about the result of yeah. them and we don't like the solution that means cuts, as make we certainly happy, right? saw. Yeah, it, it, well, but that, that's also the challenge that this legislature faced. So let's, let's give them a bit more credit in this respect as well. You've got the governor here saying that elements of the glide path to zero that would be rolled back in a piece of legislation are going to be vetoed. Uh, this legislature, while they didn't listen a lot to the governor, they also didn't want to go toe to toe with him. But they also knew that their constituents had no appetite for cuts. So in some ways, they were really kind of funneled in this direction anyway. This may have been the only uh, area of compromise that they could have delivered that would have actually, A, been passed into law as policy, and B, uh, kept the constituency from getting their torches and their pitchforks together. You, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> two or three years ago, I, I remember making a statement on the show, and when I'm wrong, I'll certainly admit it, I'm wrong quite often. Uh, and this was one of the times I said, you know, the governor kind of lined up the legislature. He got the people he wanted in place, and and it was going to be smooth sailing for him. And I remember I had Phil Journey on the show, and he said, "You'll be surprised. It's not going to be nearly that easy for him because Republicans don't necessarily march lockstep with the governor." And I think we kind of saw that. The consumption tax point that that Chapman made, and this is why I think people like consumption taxes and like paying more sales tax versus income taxes or property taxes. It's it's kind of a page you go first mm -hmm. of all. And it's, it doesn't show up so much. You know, you can you can do your taxes at the end of the year, and you see your what you've paid to the state for the year. You pay that property tax every year, and you see what you've paid. But most people don't really sit down and say, "Okay, I paid this much in sales tax today, and this much yesterday." They don't do that, so mm -hmm. I don't think it stings quite so much. Right, and we increased sales tax three tenths of a cent. And you remember a few years ago in the downturn, they increased it a whole penny, and then we pulled it off to and partially implemented it to help fund the income tax cuts. So um, hopefully the three-tenths don't hurt families too bad in Kansas, but we have cut income taxes over a billion since we passed that plan. So, Well, we're going to take another commercial break because I'm, I'm way behind in the show, so we've got to do that. When we come back, I want to hear from you what some of the, some of the good things, your favorite things that happened during okay. the session. We'll be right back. If you like quality and selection, you'll love Yoder's Ornamental Concrete in Burton. With the best selection of fountains, bird baths, planters, benches, yard lights, animals, and figurines, you're sure to find the right piece for the right spot at your home or office. Since 1984, the Yoder family has been committed in making the finest of quality statuary, the largest statuary outlet in Kansas, located on Highway 50 in Burton, Kansas. That's Yoder's Ornamental Concrete. 
When we created the Silverado Rally Edition, we figured, why stop there? These four new Silverado Special Editions are just the beginning. From this year's fastest growing full-size truck brand, Chevy Silverado. Or choose this Silverado All-Star with a total value of 8,000 when you finance through select lenders. And find your bonus tag and get an additional one to 2,000 cash allowance on select vehicles in stock. And welcome back. We have Senate President Susan Wagle and Chapman Rackway both join us uh, on the program this morning. Senator, I wanted to talk about some of the positive things that you saw come out of the session, some of your favorite uh, pieces of legislation or favorite ha things that happened. One thing we're all happy about is we have a two-year budget since the governor's been elected rather than a budget, a new budget every year. Mm -hmm. So we uh, have solved that problem. Next year we will probably most likely have a very short session just like we did in the off year uh, two years ago. Um, we passed a block grant for schools. We have a really broken school finance formula that continually goes to court. Uh, we have 265 school districts out there, 105 counties, and uh, all of them pride themselves in their own administration, their own human resource department, their own payroll. And I think taking a look at school finance, a serious look, and taking time to write a deliberate new funding formula would be very important for the state of Kansas. That was one of the highlights. And, and you still have the, the lawsuit, though, hanging out there. Mm -hmm. That's going to make everybody a little bit nervous, I would imagine. Right. We believe that will be appealed to the Supreme Court, and we could have a decision next year. Yeah. What about uh, Medicaid expansion? That was in the news quite a bit uh, this, this last session. Didn't happen. Uh, what, what do you think the future is? Um, I think that's difficult with this legislature. and. Uh, I, I think uh, until some of the legislators see the consequences of not allowing these hospitals to have this expansion, I, I think that uh, they're very resistant to the whole concept. Chapman, any, any thoughts in the last, we've got about two, two and a half minutes, uh, any thoughts or any other questions you have for the senator? Okay, not particularly, but uh, it, I was uh, trying to kind of run down the, the catalog of bills that have gone through this legislature to, to find many bright spots. And except for the fact that we got a, a minimization of cuts to schools and so on uh, through this budget it is really one of the only things to, to for the legislature to hang its its hat on. Uh, when I did a radio interview um, the, earlier this week, it was the only thing that kept me from giving a grade of F to the legislature in, uh, on this session. It, there's a lot more for this legislature to kind of hang its head about. Uh, a lot of uh, silly uh, legislation that uh, came through, like stripping the rights of uh, K through 12 teachers uh, to uh, address controversial material in the in the classroom. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 <laughs> considerations over texting Girl Scout cookies and so on that came through. And uh, th those bills didn't, uh, well, they, they didn't pass. There's, uh, there's still a lot of uh, kind of hand-wringing about uh, where this legislature has gone. I don't think there are a lot of bright spots Chapman, to, to come out the, of there. Let the yeah. senator have the last minute here. To Just one quick word, that. Chapman. Uh, the teacher uh, teaching in the classroom, that was misrepresented. The standards that we pass for teachers in the classroom are the same standards that the FEC abides by with radio and TVs. And so, you know, things that you don't want your children to see on TV, you don't want your teacher doing in the classroom. So that's very over-exaggerated. We had some tremendous successes. Uh, we passed uh, unemployment reform. We enhanced good time credit for drug offenders. We fixed scrap metal. We did we did a lot of great things that I don't have time to go into now. And so I disagree with Chapman and saying that it was a do-nothing uh, legislature. Uh, we did the best we could do in the time that we had with a, a budget that was in difficult times. You know, I think it's one of those times, too, where people really got to see kind of the <coughs> sausage being made, which, which is not always pretty. And mm -hmm. uh, the legislative session, this was, a, this was a tough one. Oh, it was very tough. And it was just like seeing sausage. I mean, it, people had to come to an agreement. Senator, thank you very much for being on the program. Chapman, thank you. thank you for being on the show as well. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments for us, please email us at thisweekinkansas at cake.com. I hope you have a wonderful week. Kids will be kids.